Hello everyone, Simon here from the Wales of Wall Street. I hope you're doing fantastic. Well, we've got Hadira Hashgraph video here, HBAR on the exchange. Do make sure that you check out our other videos on the channel and smash that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. Multitude of assets and projects and topics within the channel. And hopefully you're enjoying these. If there are any tokens or assets we don't cover that you wish us to, let us know in the comments and we will try and do videos on those as and when we can for sure as well. But let's go into the topic today. We're looking at a couple of factors here for Hedera. Uh, recently, an article came out uh, from Hedera, which was basically a sharing of this uh, TOCO token, um, or indeed a platform here that are very focused on real estate, both domestic and private aspects of this. And we've been covering the real estate topic for quite a bit over the last couple of weeks. And we have done really since the beginning of the channel started, to be honest. This is a really uh, interesting sector for me, a $48 trillion market by 2031. If you look at all the different statistics out there, very interesting indeed. Uh, but for me, um, Hadira, of course, a fantastic network for building upon the great transaction aspect, the cost efficiency and all these great things. Um, and it's no surprise why a lot of the projects out there utilize Hedera. And we're going to see the ecosystem of Hedera move up and up as time goes by. It's a great time in these bear and winter markets to keep the development going, to keep the partnerships onboarding. Because when we do swing around, there is going to be so much narrative and excitement around these kind of chains and networks that are out there with all the building that they have done. And it becomes even more of a bigger case study when more investors pour into, they're doing their research, finding out what's been going the last couple of years and what's coming in the future as well. So this article, particularly around the tokenization aspect of real estate, and particularly with this one, it's quite interesting. Something I never really considered um, in terms of how this could advance certain areas of real estate purchasing. And this is particularly looking at syndicates. So property syndicates is where a, a, a bunch of people basically come together under one brokerage to, to buy something together. Uh, but there's also some other elements of how, how syndicates work as well, of course. Uh, but this quite nicely, effectively, is a matchmaker between investors, it says. It's quite interesting because, you know, it sounds a bit crazy, but uh, I've been looking at boats recently. And actually, one of the really good ways of doing it is for a syndicate because you don't have to necessarily worry too much about the servicing, the maintenance and things like this, but you can book the boat out uh, as and when you need to during the year or whatever, or when you go on holidays, uh, but you're doing it with other people. So the cost is reduced. Say, is there buying a boat for 250,000? You could you could share one between, between you with a, a very different amount, right? Depending on how many people there are. So this is no different to the estate uh, aspect, the real estate aspect of the world too. And some really cool uh, case studies here um, in regards to New Zealand. Um, so interesting uh, for this trial and being done in, in New Zealand. We've, we've covered Ripple doing things in Portugal. We've covered Proppy doing things worldwide anyway. Um, and this is a really interesting market that I, I truly believe is going to develop significantly utilizing Web3 and blockchain in particular. And we mentioned about things about how the real estate property market both domestically and privately, can be massively enhanced with Web3 and blockchain. The use of verification, the processing, the smart contracts, whether it's right or wrong, KYC knocking into the effect as well for you know, identification, etc. Uh, deeds and things being held on smart contracts and processed and verified on blockchain as well, as we mentioned just a minute ago. Um, but here was quite interesting. Uh, the demand for property investment is enduring. The regulatory regime and the business environment are well regarded. And the regulator is supportive of innovative innovation sorry, in the sector. So New Zealand apparently is that secondary markets operated by property syndicate managers for their own syndicates are exempt from securities exchange licensing. So there's an opportunity here uh, within New Zealand right now uh, utilizing distribution ledger technology, i.e. DLTs, which could help the syndicates have that extra matchmaking processing aspect, you know, the trustworthiness, all of this, all of these things that blockchain can bring, but also the transactional aspects, the control of the deeds, the management of the deeds, the transparency of everything being under this kind of technology and platform. I think this is really interesting. And as I said, it's not, not an area of real estate that I've really sort of thought about in terms of uh, the DLT aspect. So this could be really interesting developments over the, over time. Um, but it's, it's definitely worth looking at all the different ecosystems that are available in Hedera and what those kind of ecosystems actually do in power. Uh, because this TOCO aspect is very interesting indeed as I was reading through it over the last couple of days. 
Um, but for sure, something uh, not just about real estate is looking at pretty much most of the aspects of um, NFT op- op- obligations. So we're talking about um, you know non-fungible tokens, anything that's not a ratio one to one, something that is got a tangible value basically, and something in particular of these kind of higher values. It's really important that we have the transparency, we have the removal or at least hopefully working towards the removal of things like fraud and money laundering and things like this. All these big checks that usually take a long time with the existing manual administrative process of buying and selling properties. So I think this is really interesting and just something I wanted to bring to the attention that again, another chain and network is really focusing on this area. Could real estate be the next kind of like hype growth narrative. Who knows, we'll have to see. The other topic I wanted to bring into the attention, uh, this isn't the first time I've kind of spoken about these kind of projects. Um, I'm quite interested about how DAOs will work or indeed things where we're seeing the integration of like play to earn, learn to earn, move to earn, all of these things coming into fruition through uh, your society and all of this. But this particular token or, or project called Locker Room Uh, We've seen a few projects like this out there already where a fan or a user can get through the app some variations of collectibles, uh, whether these be rare items or or items even from a game or a match that they've just watched. could be goal celebrations. It could be digitally signed celebrations or something after someone scored. Um, But there's an opportunity in the near future for things like voting within sports and matchmaking processes. Now, I think this is further down the line, but I can actually envision sport really transitioning to a more community fan-based operation. Maybe not fully operational in the sense that you have full, or the fans have full 100% dictatorship as to what happens in a game of football or soccer or any sport for that matter. But I know that Hedera, uh, through many different projects, has been working on things like with the boxing, right? Of being able to, who who's going to fight who, the voting system, but also like who's the next opponent for a fighter. And it's really interesting because this kind of, you could have really a really defined, unique experience for fans, but also the games and the sports themselves. So there's a multitude of different options here with Locker Room. I think it's quite interesting, as I said, with the collectibles, the opportunity for votes, The share mechanism could be quite interesting, especially if you've got things like a fan token. This doesn't necessarily mean that you own parts of the actual company or the sport organization itself, but you could have potentially shares in a fan token, which we know are building, especially last year. It was all talk about NFTs, fan tokens, all these things. And it's gone quiet because obviously the market's pretty much dead and no one wants to talk about it, right? But eventually this will swing back around and there will be a mechanism of gaming experiences and sporting experiences that will really enhance and further everything forwards. So I'm kind of looking forward to, in some ways, how this will work. But equally, me being a very sporty person myself, I'm sort of on the fence of this kind of thing as to how much do we give away and, you know, at the end of the day as well, how do we keep it fair so that not all the same people are still voting and making the the decisions that we perhaps don't want to see? And is it even a good idea for fans to have that kind of operational um, dictatorship or ability to be able to change things or manipulate things or, or move things in a certain direction? Should we not let things happen naturally? But that being said... I do totally see the experience of entertainment that could possibly come out of this kind of thing. So Locker Room, again, a tokenization being built on the Hedera network, just showcasing really the different varieties of different projects and technologies and solutions that can be built on these various networks. And it's going to be a race, in my opinion, the race over the next few years for networks and chains to really define what they want to be, what areas they want to hit, And more importantly as well, what kind of partnerships they can bring on as fast as possible. Because there's no way that all of these blockchains will operate um, together. Like there's going to be too many of them and there's too many new ones coming in as well. So I do think there's a defining stage over the next five, 10 years. Some will drop off, some will get bought out, some will be transitioned to existing companies that are way before blockchain even started to come and take these on. We have to see this. But you know, there's, it's going to be very interesting. Like I said, I think it's going to be a race in itself. But for me, this is just showcasing, as I said, some really interesting variables of the network. 
Let us know what you think, because I think this kind of thing could be quite interesting, but equally, as long as it's in the right hands, I'm quite interested to see how all this kind of thing develops. It's not the only one out there. There's loads of different ones as well. So again, even in that instance, from an experience of sporting, etc., is there going to be a race for partnerships? You know, are certain teams going to have certain exclusivities? Once you start doing that, um, it's, it starts to get a bit more difficult about having your own sort of unique experience because everyone starts doing it. So something to really consider and have an interest in, in my opinion, as you're doing your research and thinking about the extra things that can happen within the chain and network. So guys, that's a couple of topics really interesting for Hedera. Let's jump into the chart for the next few minutes as well. Uh, Hedera has indeed not moved significantly since the last video we did, but I wanted to mention a couple of things that I've done within my portfolio and my, um, my future moves in the likes of Hedera and other assets as well. So we've got this fib retracement level taking the lower regions and some of the most recent high points that we've seen as well. And if we look back uh, back in time, back towards the end of 2021, you see the highest points of Hedera back up here around 60 cents. So there's loads of movement to come from its existing positions, right? But what I didn't want to do is also ignore the previous positions that we saw back in 2019 and 2020. 2020 was when I got a lot of my Hedera, to be honest, and I've been waiting really patiently for it to come back down to these regions that it is at right now. It's almost like a second chance. I do actually have some purchase orders here at the lower regions of two cents as well. So I actually have, uh, sorry, the higher regions of two cents. I've got some buy orders just above three cents and just below around 2.7. Some people are calling me a bit crazy for doing that, but I have reasoning behind this. As I said, we have to look at historic data of all our assets as well. And for me, not only looking at the Fib retracement chart here on, on the bottom sides here, but I'm also looking at where we've been before for, for the mentioning of resistance and support. So right now we're playing really along with these kind of big volatile areas that we've seen over in 2020 and towards the end of 2020. It shot straight through uh, back, back at the beginning of 2021 all the way up what we just showed you. And now we're on our way back down. You can see, especially here around six cents, touching back on these top points here and here in 2020 and where we shot through. So we had some resistance twice or maybe even three times actually and shot through to try and identify some new higher support areas which clearly over time did not um, have any fruition whatsoever. So we're now back at these lower regions, right? Back down towards here. Um, and this is where it gets interesting for me personally because we are now looking at these stages, these slightly lower stages in 2020. And I want to put these lower orders in here because I do generally believe that as we're on the downward trend still in the market, I still think there's some time to go for the market to come down further. That's not saying Hadira is going to fail or flop or anything. It's just how the markets work, right? That's why I have the lower areas. And that main identification of the lower regions of three cents just predominantly comes from these lower regions that we saw in October to December 2020 and also back here in the beginning stages of 2020. I do believe that we need to come back and test these markers properly for the longevity of Hedera's movements in the next bull runs. I think there's too much of a big gap here and I think there's too much of a uh, uncertainty of where the actual support levels are. It's doing very well um, since that drop down here on the 8th and 9th of November that we saw because of FTX. It's stayed down in these regions uh, just under the 5 cent mark. This is why I think if there's another catalytic event that drops us down, we could definitely probably see the lower regions of 4 cents again as we did on those few days. And we did try and test those regions back on the 23rd and 22nd of November respectively as well. But if we penetrate this area and it, and it doesn't um, kind of support this area, I think these next areas are the ones that come in next. That's why I've got my orders there. May not come through, but I have to apply the method of DCAing, but also looking at previous history data and where the market is going in general. It's stabilizing relatively nicely, as I said in the last couple of weeks, but it's not moving upwards and it's not moving further downwards right now either. So I think we're in a bit of a limbo situation and that's pretty much roughly confirmed in the RSIs as well. We've got the 43 on both the 14 day and the 28 day and the 90 day. So for me, this 90 day in the long term aspect, I don't talk about 90 day too much, but I think this could be coming back down to around the 40 mark eventually. 
And also these 14 day and the 28 days need to reduce themselves slightly more as well, perhaps around to the sort of 37, 38 mark on some of these indicators too. You see we're in a bit of a small buying volume pattern. It's not huge, uh, but it has taken us up a tiny bit. That's why we've got a bit of a curve on the chart up here. And that came off the back of a big sell off, as we said, with the FTX movement and things like this. So people are buying up. It's still a confident, um, trustworthy asset to be investing in. Hedera is going to be absolutely huge, guys. We're talking about DAG protocol here, direct to cyclic graph. This is humongous for the evolution of blockchain and how we're going to move forward in society and the economics, tokenomics, all of these aspects pushing forward. So we're in a bit of an upward trend here. This is why I think it's stabilizing now. It's slightly fading off just today. We'll see how that plans out, but it could see a bit of a repeat that we saw in October. And that's why I think it could be dropping back down to those lower regions of four cents eventually over the next couple of weeks. We'll have to again, see how that plays out, but that's how I'm anticipating it. I still think there's a lot of macro events around the world that are really uh, pushing pressure on a lot of the markets. We've seen like the Dow Jones, for example, struggling a bit right now. Could we be in for a bit of a crash over the next couple of weeks uh, or indeed the next couple of months? We'll have to see. And I do believe as well by the time March comes around that we might see some significant drops as well. Um, so I'm just waiting around for this really. I'm still buying Hedera at these current points. I think they're really nice, acceptable points for DCAing in. But I would love, love to grab Hedera at smaller prices way back when I saw in 2020. Uh, this is where I started making um, some good moves and accumulations on these patterns. And then I stopped on the rise and I've been waiting for it to come back down again. Yes, I could have sold some, but I'm not into that game right now. I'm uh, just waiting and wanting to accumulate for the future of Hedera and other assets out there. On the right hand side, the performance in case is showing a good moves on the week, but still negative on the three months and the one months. Not huge, still a lot better than a lot of the assets out there. Again, proving the confidence and trustworthiness in this asset from many investors. The year to date and the year is more interesting for me. Still think there's an opportunity for lower regions, but also it's showing you the huge opportunity of growth in the future to even break even and then go beyond that into a positive momentum as well. Once we start doing that, we could see, I, I'm pretty sure of it, at least Hedera getting over to that dollar mark by 2025 and could even get towards that three to five dollar mark if we get the right mass adoption and awareness into the markets. And I, th I think that's more than possible. Let us know what you think about that. But I do predict between three and five dollars by 2025 for Hedera. That would be great position from the four cents that we're currently at right now or just under five cents so guys that's wrapping up a few topics and a few chart aspects for hedera let us know if you're still accumulating this one are you hopeful for the future of hedera what do you think of those little projects tasks that we talked about in this video as well real estate being huge and i i'm really interested to see the development of these sporting kind of voting fan based systems what do you think about it? You're a sporting fan out there. What do you think about having more power as a fan and as an experience enhancer at games, matches, or whatever they may be out there? Thanks for watching, guys. We'll catch up with Hedera in the next week or so. Uh, until then, thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next Wales of Wall Street video. Bye-bye.